Hello everyone. So today's video is going to be everything I read in May. So in May I read 43 volumes of manga um, from quite a few different series. So I'm probably not going to make this video too long hopefully. So we'll just get right into it. So the first thing I read this month was Noragami volumes 15 through 22. This is the newest release volume. So in volume 16 through 18 I wrote down that the art looked a lot better um, than it had previously. I don't know if it holds through the whole 22 volumes that I've read so far, but I did write down that volumes 15 or 16 through 18 had really good art. And that was also the first arc that I really, really liked in the series. I mean, I did like the series before, but that arc really had me attached to what was happening and the characters and all their interactions. However, as we get up to like this volume, it is getting very, very melodramatic, which isn't so bad for some people. I didn't have that big of a problem with it, but it was something that I noticed. It was getting pretty melodramatic, and uh, I wish I hadn't caught up at this point, which is why I don't like reading uh, unfinished series, because this is not a good place to catch up at right now, because um, it pretty much ended at a cliffhanger, and I don't read scans, so I'm waiting until the next volume comes out to find out what happens next. So that was the first thing I read in May. And the next thing I can't show you because I don't own these volumes, um, but I read all of Attack on Titan after um, when season four ends. So I think that's volume 29 all the way through to the end. Um, I had previously dropped Attack on Titan, but because they aren't finishing the anime until like winter of next year, I decided to just finish the manga to see what happens so I don't get spoiled for too many more things than I'd already been spoiled for. Overall, I know that the ending to Attack on Titan is uh, very polarizing. I personally didn't think it was that bad, at least not in comparison to the rest of the series. Attack on Titan is not my favorite thing ever. I definitely have lots of problems with it, um, but I find the anime really enjoyable. So I could see why the ending was annoying to some people, but I personally didn't have a problem with it. Um, it wasn't anything worse than the rest of the final arc was to me. Um, so I thought it was fine. I kind of liked it, honestly. So yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on Attack on Titan. I literally only finished reading it so I wouldn't get spoiled anymore for the anime, um, which I like a lot more than the manga. I did note that, um, again, the art is a little bit better than I remember it being. Um, maybe that's just because it's the end of the series, um, so the author's art has improved. But um, I do remember the art being worse than it was when I was reading it this month. The next thing I read this month was Real Account Volumes 2 and 3. So this was weird because I read the first volume in April and I really liked it. Um, and then I read these two and this one is good. And then this one um, is strange because it like starts the story over. So I feel like the first two volumes are like a complete series. And then you'll notice if you go in here, the chapters start over at one. And then it's like a new protagonist, but not a new protagonist. Um, and I don't understand what's going on. I think these two stories could be connected um, in the future if that's what the author wants to do. I just don't know what's happening at this point. Um, it kind of felt like the story just started over. So I don't know where this is going from here. I will keep picking these volumes up slowly, probably not buy them all, um, but I'll go pretty slow with these ones just to figure out what is happening because I don't know anymore. Not that I really knew in the first volume, but at least the first volume was just so ridiculous that I didn't care. I mean, these are still ridiculous. I was just confused about the weird shift that happened uh, after volume two. So the next couple volumes are ones I read in that reading vlog a couple weeks ago. So I'll just go over them quickly to not repeat myself too much. So I read Mermaid Saga volume one and volume two, which is a complete series. Um, this is a collection of horror short stories about mermaids. There is an overarching plot, but it really is not completed at all. There's no like end game for the overarching plot. Um, it just kind of ends, um, which is okay. They're just short stories. Um, and I definitely liked this first volume more than the second volume, but I would definitely recommend this to anyone who likes horror short stories. Um, they were pretty good for the most part. And then Zom 100 Volume 2, I liked this one more than the first volume, so I will keep collecting the series for now. Um, it's just kind of ridiculous, <laughs> um, which is fine. And sometimes, I want to see if I can find the panel. Sometimes the main character really looks like Luffy from One Piece. <laughs> um, like, a lot. He just doesn't have the scar, but other than that, he looks like Luffy. And then I read Requiem of the Rose King, Volumes 8 through 13 in that video as well. Um, yeah, this continues to be good. There's lots of drama and relationships and broken relationships and, um, violence and, I don't know, <laughs> betrayal. 
everything is happening here. Um, this is kind of one where you just like watch to see what happens or read to see what happens in this case. Um, yeah, also the art is really pretty. But yeah, I don't know where we're going after this. I don't know what the, the goal is after this volume. But I don't know. We'll see when the next volume comes out. I think that's not until November though. So, And the last thing I read in that video was Merman in my tub volume one, which is about a merman who lives in this guy's tub and he has some friends who visit sometimes and that's pretty much it. Um, it's a four panel comedy manga. Um, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> so the next thing is a series I read all in one day. Um, it was my favorite read of the month, probably, um, definitely, actually. Um, but I have very, very complicated thoughts about it and I'm going to try to explain them all to you here. Um, so it was Inside Mari. So I read volume one through seven, um, which is all that's out in English physically. And then I finished the series on the Crunchyroll app. It's all available on there if you want to read it without buying it. So I'll just briefly go over the premise. It's about this guy who is kind of stalking this girl and uh, he wakes up one day in her body, like a body swap scenario. The next thing I'm going to say is that this series is very, very, very sexually explicit. Um, I don't know how this can be on the Crunchyroll manga app because on the app store it says it's for ages 12 plus, but this is very, very graphic. So I don't know how it's available to be on there when some other stuff isn't available to be on the Viz app because of the graphicness of it, but this can be on there. I don't know. Also, I went to Barnes & Noble. Um, they just have volumes four and five which are the most explicit ones, I think. They just have them sitting on the shelf for anyone to open and look in. Um, there's no plastic wrap on them, which, I mean, you can debate whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is a thing that is strange to me. I will say though, um, I was reading some Goodreads reviews and Goodreads is a really interesting place to read reviews for manga. <laughs> um, I'm not saying if it's good or bad, it's just interesting, but people were calling the nudity fan service um, or the sexual scenes fan service. I don't think it's fan service. Um, I don't know how to interpret that really, but I don't think it's fan service. I don't think it was meant to excite the reader in any way. It just, it does play a part in the story. It has a thematic reason for being there. Um, and you can debate whether that justifies the sheer graphicness of it in the series, but I do think it has a literary purpose for being there. I'm really putting my English degree to good use for this series. So I think my favorite part about this series is the themes that are explored and I'm going to try to be careful to not spoil anything, um, but I really like the themes of identity and self-discovery and um, also objectification is a thing that's definitely explored in this series. Um, this is the first Shuzo Oshimi work I have finished. It's not the first one I've read, but it's the first one I've completed and this actually really makes me excited to finish his other series. I never finished Happiness, I actually dropped it, but I'm really, really regretting that now. That's probably the only manga I regret selling off um, because now I've really enjoyed Shuzo Oshimi's works. So yeah, I might rebuy Happiness, we'll see. Um, I would say if you enjoy like thrillers, um, suspense series, um, you might like this. Shuzo Oshimi's works, uh, other works, I'm sure you would like this one as well. Just be aware that it is very, very graphic. Um, so just so you're aware of that. But I did really like it and I think this is one I could probably reread in the future um, without missing anything. It is a thriller suspense thing, but I don't think knowing the spoiler at the end or the solution at the end would inhibit my reading uh, or rereading of it in the future. And next, in a very different tone, I read Spy Family Volume 1. I have Volume 5 here, but I read Volume 1 all the way through everything that's out on the Shonen Jump app. I'm sure everything that needs to be said about the series has already been said. Um, if I just said everything, I'd just be repeating myself. I will say my favorite things about this series are definitely the reaction faces. The art, the art all over, but specifically the reaction faces are very, very funny. Um, and also Anya, which is, who is not on either of these, she's on the back. Um, she's adorable, like everyone says, and I love her. Um, so yeah, I'll keep reading this. Um, it probably won't be in any more of these videos because I'll just read it as they come out, as the chapters come out on the Shonen Jump app. Um, but yeah, I liked it. 
And the next thing I read this month was Blue Period Volume 3, which I realized I forgot to include in my May manga haul, but I did get this this month and I read it this month as well. So this volume just continues our main character's struggles um, and self-discovery, which I really enjoy. And also the other thing I had to mention with this volume is all of the characters are interesting. I am not bored by a single character, no matter how minor they are. I think they're all interesting, um, which is something that not a lot of series can do, but this one does it. Um, also, also, I don't think I've seen anyone mention this. Someone probably has, but I just haven't seen them say it. But this um, manga has color pages in the middle of it, um, which are really nice, especially with the art theme going on in the manga. So that's something I appreciate. Um, but yeah, I'm still enjoying this series and I will continue to pick it up and read it. And the last thing that I read this month has been on my bookshelf since 2018 and I'm just now getting to it. Um, some people will probably like that I'm finally getting to this, but I read volume one of Vagabond, which is actually volumes one through three since it's the Viz Big. Um, I don't have too much to say about this, honestly, except for the fact that, um, one, Takiko Inoue's art is beautiful, um, obviously, but also I hadn't considered the fact that his beautifully detailed art paired with a very violent samurai manga means that you are looking at some very, very, very graphic, gory scenes, um, which doesn't bother me, but I'm sure it would bother some people because it is very graphic. And I don't know why I hadn't considered that before, but when I opened the page and there was someone's head being cut off with blood all over, I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't realize that Takiko Inoue's art would make it look like that. One thing that I do like about these editions, though, um, that I don't think a lot of other editions do, is splitting up the double page spreads so it doesn't get lost in the gutter. This isn't the case for all the spreads in this book. Um, some of them do get lost in the gutter, but there are quite a few where it's actually split. Um, as you can see here, the white space in the middle, so you don't lose the art in the gutter, which I feel like can sometimes um, ruin a double page spread if you can't even see what's happening because it's all lost in the gutter. Um, so this volume does that sometimes well and sometimes not well. Sometimes they don't split it up. I don't know how they decided which ones to split up and which ones not to, but that is something to consider with this. And yeah, I'm sure I will have more thoughts um, when I continue the series. Right now, I like it. I like the characters. Um, it seems to be following a pretty um, common arc, but I don't mind common arcs at all. So um, yeah, I'm excited to read more of this in the future. So that was everything I read in May. Let me know um, if you have any thoughts about anything I had to say in this video, or let me know what you read in May, um, and we'll discuss in the comments. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!